This morning, I want to share on the topic of spiritual growth. We're going to be looking at some scriptures that I believe are going to aid in our understanding. When we, you know, when we study the Word of God, we have to mix it with faith. That's what God said. We, it has to be mixed with faith. When God was talking about the Israelites who were wandering in the desert, he said, uh, Paul speaking, said, you know, the same word that was given to them, that's given to us, did not profit them because they didn't mix it with faith. Right? right? So we're going to dig a little bit deeper today to see what that means. You know, the, we, we have to understand the word of God comes directly from God. It's God-breathed, isn't it? And um, we can delay a lot of things by, by not lining up to God's Word. They say that the journey of the Israelites should have only taken like two weeks to get from Egypt to the Promised Land. 11, 12, 13 days, something like that. It took them 40 years. How many of our promises can be delayed because we're not mixing it with faith, right? Just something to think about. How many times, I know for me, I've had to go on a couple of different trips around that mountain because of my stubbornness or not willing to, to submit, right? We're all in the same boat. You know, and, and God said about the Israelites, I don't want it to be said of me or anyone in here, and he said, but they're a stiff-necked people. You know, they just wouldn't, wouldn't grasp what I was trying to tell them, wouldn't believe what I was trying to tell them. Well, that, I don't think that's any of us here today. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's like we mix that with faith. Things happen, doesn't it? Amen. So, anyway, uh, you don't have to turn there yet. But Hebrews, Hebrews 11.6 says, very familiar first verse, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, that he is God. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, continually seek him, sincerely seek him. You know, no matter how we come into Christ and his kingdom after salvation, it doesn't matter about our background, it doesn't matter about our social status or our, even our level of education, we need to grow spiritually, don't we? We have to grow spiritually. We can't, stay, we, we can't stay in kindergarten, spiritually speaking. You know, like a piece of fruit connected to the vine, right? It's going to receive all the nutrients, all the goodness that that vine has to offer. Everything it has to supply to become fruitful. And this is what God talks about. And, you know, he's got a vast supply, doesn't he? The, the supply from heaven is vast. It's endless. So we'll go to the first uh, slide here. And this. It's out of the book of John, chapter 15, and it says, Jesus talking, I am the true vine. How many of you know there's a lot of other vines you can connect to? But he said there's only one true vine, and that's him. And then my father, he is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Right? He wants to cut off all that dead stuff that, want, that hinders us and keeps us from a healthy spiritual life. Right? Well, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain, means continue and dwell in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. What he's saying, we have to stay connected to him, in him, to bear fruit. That's the ultimate thing, right? Life, his life, the life of God will flow through us as we are connected to him. You know, he doesn't, and the, the greatest thing is he doesn't expect us to do it alone, doesn't he? Does he? I mean, that's why he came. That's, well, that's why he saved us. He doesn't expect us to do it alone in our own strength. But how do we abide? We abide by his word, by prayer, and by obedience to him. We trust him to clean and prune us throughout our walk so we can grow properly. He cuts off those branches that we don't need, like we were saying, right? He said, I'll remove those branches that you don't need. And uh, sometimes that's not always a pleasant thing. You know, it, it reminds me just... Uh, my walk with the Lord, just starting out, kind of re reconnecting with the Lord. 
I had met my, my wife, Sharon, and both of us had, had before that just rededicated our, our lives to the Lord. And we were introduced to each other by mutual friends of ours that actually weren't Christians. But they kept saying to her and they kept saying to me, oh, you know, you really like this girl. She's a Christian. Da, da, da. You know, and how many know that, that can mean anything, right? But anyway, uh, it was true. She was a, a, a for real Christian and they got us together. And, you know, through that time, we witnessed to him. And, um, but, you know, after a while, uh, God cut that relationship off. It just, it wasn't fruitful anymore. Right? In fact, it was kind of like starting to drag us down. It was kind of hindering our own walk. And the Lord separated us from that union. You know, sometimes he'll do that. It could be a relationship sometimes, that, that something's hanging on to you that shouldn't be there. And if that's what it is, you know, let the Lord crop that thing off. Amen. And we, we saw that. We both came to the understanding of that, that that was the Lord that did that. It really wasn't my, what we had to do with it, but it was the Lord that did it. Because they were hindering our walk together. So sometimes the Lord would do that. Just an example. But, um, you know, I, I love God's illustrations. They're just so simple, aren't they? You know, like I said, pruning always is pleasant. There, there's a, I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard a story that in the old days when the old winemakers used to wait, make wine, you know, they used to trot it by foot, that they were very careful about the amount of pressure that they put on those grapes. They wanted to put just the right amount of pressure for that juice to come out. If it was too much pressure, the seed actually could be extracted from that grape and it got into the mix, it makes the wine bitter. You know, the Lord knows how much pressure to put on us, doesn't he, to make that sweet wine, right? He knows just about how much pressure to put on us to make that sweet wine. And sometimes it's not always pleasant. Sometimes there is pressure. But we've got to trust him to know he knows the right amount of pressure to make that sweet, sweet wine. So to grow and mature is the most important thing after salvation. We've covered that. You know, and think about that. That's no, not only an advantage to you, which it is, but that's an advantage to your family. That's an advantage to your loved ones and your circle of friends, right? As you grow, it, it helps everybody, doesn't it? You know, and how many know God wants the best for all of us, doesn't he? He doesn't want to hold anything back from us. Uh, Christ seen in a believer will draw others to them, won't him? Right, that light of Christ, seen in that believer, as we walk in him and that light shines greater, it draws men to him. Amen? And that's what we want. But spiritual, cho spiritual growth is a choice, isn't it? You know, we get up every, every morning and we make choices on how we're going to live our day, right? Uh, same thing spiritually. Uh, we can either uh, grow in it, we can either be stagnant in it, whatever, but we make that choice every day. We can either gain ground or lose ground depending on our choices. And if, and if our attitude is just to hold on where we're at, that's not a good attitude. We should have a hunger to grow, right? That should be a natural response for us after you're born again. It should be natural in us to want to grow in Christ. Matthew 5 said, Blessed or happy are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, because I might fill them. They shall be filled, right? He said, they shall be filled. That's his promise. One of the most important verses in the Sermon on the Mount is this verse, because, you know, when on that, on that sermon, you know, he was laying the foundation for Christian living, but this is the basic foundation for Christian, Christian living. Christian living is to have that hunger and thirst for his righteousness. And he promises you will be filled. You know, if that hunger is not there in your heart, then ask God to stir it up. You know, if you've been complacent, if you're not being where you think you should be, ask God today to stir that up in our life. Amen? He'll do it. He'll do it. Let's go to the next slide, 2 Timothy, and we're going to read out of 3.16 to 17. And it says 16, all scripture, say all. All scripture. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, the very breath of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, meaning it's holy, it's divine, and it's supernatural. 
17, verse 17, that the man or woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, to mean be equipped. In other words, everything we need to grow is contained in his word. We hold the very words of the Lord, of God himself, in our hands in that book. Amen. Amen. The word of God is essential to growth. Here the author of Hebrews challenges his readers. If you go to the next slide, it's slide three. Hebrews six to one to three. And I took this out of the amplified because I just like the way it read. It said, therefore, let us go on. Let us grow is what he's saying and get past the elementary stage in the teachings and doctrine of Christ, the Messiah, advancing, meaning moving forward, steadily towards the completeness and perfection that belong to spiritual maturity. Let us not, again, be in the lay, laying the foundation of repentance and abandonment of dead works, dead formalism, and of faith by which you turn to God. With teachings about purifying, the laying of, of hands, talking about the Old Testament where the, the, the sins of the people were laid on the sacrificial animals, right, is what he's talking about, transferred to the animal, sacrificed by the priests. The resurrection from the dead and eternal judgment and punishment. These are all matters of which you should have been fully aware long, long ago. If indeed God permits or if he wills, we will now proceed or to advance. Again, he was speaking mainly to the Jewish Christians of that day that were holding on to some of the Old Testament teachings and weren't going any farther. Not that they, they should forget what has been taught to them or what, what they learn, but all of that could be applied as they grow. Applicable for us in our day too, right? We don't forget the basics, how we came in and, and, and repentance and all that. We never forget that, but we don't stop there. We must be willing to be taught and to go on. We ourselves have a tendency to be complacent and hold on to old things that, that, that shouldn't be there or even maybe teachings that aren't lining up with Scripture or aren't scripturally sound. So if a person has a question or you have a question on something, that you need to dig, right? You need to dig in and find out what the Word of God says. You don't want to be learning anything other than the Word of God. And, you know, the, remember in the book of Acts where Paul, uh, he just praised the Bereans for that, right? Uh, he said that they looked up and they searched the scriptures to see if what Paul was teaching was true. Amen. That should be us too. We want to keep searching those scriptures to make sure what you're being taught is true. Amen. And I know you're being taught the word of God here. Amen. Amen. But they wanted to learn the truth. They hungered for the truth. That's the deal. They hungered for the truth. Next, next slide, will, uh, slide four, it says Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 to 14. And he said, he says, about this, talking about immaturity, we have so much to say, and it's hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have the powers of discernment, trained by constant or continual practice to discover to distinguish good from evil. What he's saying is milk is a good thing to start out with like an infant does, but it should be eventually bringing you to the place where the meat of the gospel, the gospel teaching, can be taken in and digested. He was letting them know that he wanted to go in deeper with them, but they weren't moving from the basics is what he was telling. You know, they were hearing, but they weren't hearing. They were hearing, but they weren't listening. I always say that to to people uh, that you know aren't listening to. You go, you're hearing me, but you're not hearing me. You know, a lot of times you can have a conversation with somebody and you can tell by their eyes when they're, when they're talking to you, they're not hearing a word you say, right? Yeah, that's us sometimes. You're hearing, but you're not hearing. Amen. <clears throat> so we have to understand that his desire for us is to experience the richness that is in the Christian life. He wants us to experience that, to avoid the traps of the enemy. 
to recognize good and evil, to live in victory. He wants us victorious to share that good news. You know, the, the enemy is a master of camouflage, hiding the truth. Amen. And, and I know Pastor Al is going to be teaching on that at the seniors uh, meetings, uh, just how they, the, 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 the craftiness of the enemy. And if we don't know what the, what's in the word, how are we going to successfully use it? Right? Think about that. If we don't know what's in the Word of God, how are we going to use it as a weapon if we don't even know it's there, right? That's why he says, you know, to, to learn, to, to receive from me. Go on and grow in me. Pretty simple, right? I believe it. You know, I, I really believe, going back to that verse, when he talks about when you, when you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you'll be filled. I believe that you know, when you're seeking God with all your heart and your mind, and you, you don't have to be a scholar, but he will line you up to that place that his word can be manifest. Amen? How many of have experienced that before? I've experienced that before. When I was, when I was a new Christian, I experienced that. I was dealing with some things, and, and I only knew what I knew. Uh, but, you know, I saw, I looked back, and I saw the ha hand of God line me up. He actually put me in with, with some good, loving, seasoned Christians, and the Word of God per performed, and an absolute miracle took place. Amen? That's the heart that God's looking for. You know, He's going to reveal things as we go on in our life. But even as a baby Christian, just knowing what you know, when you seek Him, you hunger and you thirst for your righteousness, he's going to fill you up. Amen? Amen. He's going to satisfy you is what he says. You know? <clears throat> anyway, that's his desire for us. Uh, God will move you into the place of understanding. He's, he's graceful. He's merciful. Amen? Uh, let's go to the next slide. That'll be slide, uh, or Psalms out of Psalms 19. You know, I'm going to share something about going back to the pruning thought. My, my mother and father had an uh, orange tree on their property. And uh, it had been there uh, for quite a long time, even when they moved in. Well, uh, it had, it had need, needed a pretty good trimming. It was pretty, a lot of dead stuff in there. Still producing pretty good, but it needed a good trimming. Well, I'm not expert trimmers, trimmer, but my mom had asked me to go up there to to trim it for her, and, and uh, man, I gave that thing a haircut, and uh, in fact, my mom cried, I, she goes, oh, you killed that thing, and I, I said, no, no, mom, you know, it's okay, you know, you prune things, they come back better, and I'm thinking, oh, man, I hope I didn't kill that thing, because I, <laughs> I, I really hacked that thing bad, but anyway, it, it did come back, it took a couple of, <laughs> it took a couple of seasons, but that thing came back bigger and better forever. You know, and I look back in that and I said, you know, sometimes God has to give us a pretty good haircut, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But yeah, my mom, <laughs> my mom was actually crying. You killed it. <laughs> anyway, Psalms 19, <clears throat> 7 to 11. It said, the law of God is perfect, converting or restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. Amen. Think about that. You know, if if I've got an issue or I need to talk to somebody, I'd rather talk to a seasoned Christian rather than to go to a guy, a psychologist or psychiatrist with a PhD that doesn't know God, right? Amen. I'd rather go to a seasoned Christian. He says, because the, the, the fear is the beginning of wisdom for the Lord, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. The fear of reverence of God is the beginning of wisdom. You know, he promises as we progressively walk in him, he will continue to unfold the mysteries of his word. Amen. As we walk with him, as we abide. What are the benefits in growing him, says verse 8. The statues of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. In other words, to behold the wondrous things that await us in his word. He's trying to get us lined up with his word so it's going to manifest. Amen? Amen? You know, like I said, we sometimes we fight a problem, we come against a situation, and 
But have we listened to where the Lord wants us to be lined up so he can perform his word, right? He can't perform outside his word, if you think about it. If he did, he'd be a liar. So oftentimes, you know, we're whining and crying and stuff, you know, and God's not hearing us. But have we done our check yet to see if we're lined up where we're supposed to be so he can move? Amen? Because he moves in his word, doesn't he? Amen. Amen. So the uh, verse 9 says, the fear of the Lord is clean and pure, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Verse 10 says, More to be desired are they than gold, yea, much finer, or much more than fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is a great reward. His word keeps us and protects us and directs us, doesn't it? You remember the song, um, uh, some of you guys will remember the old Billy Graham Crusades. Remember that singer, George Beverly Shea? The, the song came to me, one of the songs that he said, I just took a couple of verses from it. This came to my mind when I was putting this message together. He said, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or land. I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hand. Amen. Amen. He's everything, right? The other scripture said, what would it profit a man if he gained the whole world but lost his soul, right? Nothing worse than our soul. And nothing like the word of God speaking into our life. Nothing like the Word of God. You know, when you're searching the Scriptures and He begins to speak in your life, there's nothing like it. The God of Heaven is now speaking to me. I, I'll, I'll share something else. Uh, I, I was going through a, a time, and um, the verse, you know how, you know when you're reading something, and, and I'll share another story similar to this too, but how you're reading something and you know that's just for you. And, and I was going through some tough times, and the Lord, as I was reading Romans, spoke to me. And the verse of Romans 8.28 said, if, if God be for you, who can be against you? That just ministered to me so much. And I, I actually wrote that down. I hand wrote it down, and I, I put it on my dresser. So every day I would go to my dresser, I would see that. Or every time I passed that dresser, I'd, I'd see that, that scripture. And as God is my witness, I was moping around, feeling sorry for myself, kind of in a defeated mode. And, and I'm telling you, I, 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 it was almost audible. Could have been audible. I mean, that was so real. I, I heard him saying, Michael. And I don't even know if I answered. This is how real it was. But he said, if I, your God is for you, who can be against you? Amen. I said, no one, Lord. You know, and that, that just... It lifted off. What I was carrying just lifted off. The power of God's word. But how are we going to know what's in there if we don't know what's in there, right? How, do you, how are you going to receive that if you know, don't know where, if it's in there? And this is what God is saying to us. We've got to get into the word of God, amen, and let him speak to our hearts. Amen. So if you make a habit of reading his word, joined by prayer, he will speak into your life. Uh, I got a little time. Anyway, I'll share another story. I was just sharing this with with a brother at the church that, uh, again, I was going through something and looking in the Word of God. I don't even remember how I came across it, but do you remember the story of where the disciples were out in the middle of of the lake? The the storm came up, and they, they were afraid. It said, simple little word said, the winds were contrary. And as I'm reading that scripture, you know, I've been faithfully reading, looking for, for God to speak to me all this time. That's those simple words, and the winds were contrary. The Lord just suddenly gave me a picture of my, in my mind of me being in a boat, like a little sailboat, and I was, I was trying to make headway. I'd make a little progress, and I'd come back a little bit. I'd make a little progress, and I'd come back a little bit. He said, I see you in that boat. I see your struggles. He said, but I'm working something out in your life, but I'm in that boat. And the peace of God, like the the Bible says, the peace of God that passes all understanding just settled on me. 
just knowing he was in the boat with me. Amen. The storm didn't settle right away. I eventually got through the storm. But just to know that he was in the boat with me, that's all it took, those little words. God speaking into your life is what I'm saying. Amen. And how would I know when it was in there if I didn't know it was in there, right? This is what I'm saying, right? And that's how God speak to us, through his word. But what, oh, what a blessing that was. And I, like I said, there was a peace that I can't understand that came over me. And I, I knew it was the Lord speaking directly into my life. He actually let me know that. And he says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It's needed for spiritual growth. We need his light in a dark world, don't we? Like Pastor Al was saying, I think we can all agree that there is a powerful deceiving spirit working in the world today. And the understanding of the word of God will keep us from falling into to a ditch or into danger. This alone should be enough to want us to grow spiritually, right? Right. And like I said before, how many victories or how many things get delayed because we don't take God's word seriously or we neglect it. Dull of hearing and not mixed with faith, right? You know, we all have believe we all have trouble believing sometimes. You know, life is tough, and we all have those times where our faith is weak. But I'm reminded of the story in, in the book of Mark. And can you imagine this man? He has a demon-possessed son. He's watched since he, since he was little, just watching the devil tearing him up. But one day he meets Jesus, right? And he, he sees what Jesus is doing, healing people, casting demons out of people. And he comes to Jesus, and he asks him to heal his little boy. And what has Jesus said to him? You know, if thou can believe, all things are possible, if you can believe. And what does a man say to him? He said, I believe, Lord, but help my unbelief. You know, isn't that us a lot of times? You know, we have that little faith like the mustard seed, but that's all it takes. Just that little faith. Ask God to increase that faith. Ask God to help us believe. Amen? And what happened? He, he delivered that boy. I believe, Lord. We get into those times, but help my unbelief. This is bigger than I've ever faced before, Lord. Help my unbelief. He'll show up. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, go to uh, 1 Timothy. Uh, I'm going to take this out of Amplify 2, slide 6. And it says, for talking about physical training and spiritual training. It says, for physical training is of some value, useful useful for a little. I took Again, I took this out of the Amplified. Useful a little, meaning temporal, right? It's only temporal. We don't have these bodies for too long, so it's only temporal. But godliness or spiritual training is useful and of value in everything and in every way. For it holds promise of this present life and also for the life which is to come. Uh, another great nugget for spiritual growth, right? As a dedicated athlete knows, he keeps his body in shape through discipline, right? He eats the right things spiritually. He exercises uh, physically. Uh, and he has to give up things. A lot of things are, a lot of times, are avoid things that can be damaging to his body or would hinder his ability his performance they eat right physically in the same way we have to eat right spiritually don't we you know how easy it is to be distracted but their eye that athlete's eye is on the prize isn't it and that's what keeps them focused you know we have to watch what we, he has to watch what he eats he has to watch what he sees the same as we do we have to watch what we eat watch what we see I love that old song. Do you remember they used to sing in Sunday schools? Oh, be careful, little ears, what you what you see. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you say. A lot of theology in that, isn't it? Yeah. So we need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's prompting when he touches on something in our life that isn't good for us, could be hindering to it. Be quick to deal with it, right? Why carry it? Quick, quick to deal with it. Nothing is worth holding on to the something that's going to cause or or uh, get you to miss God's blessing, right? There's nothing worse holding on to that. Let him use those pruning shears to cut those things off. Amen. Sometimes it may take a couple of pruning sessions, like I said. Uh, you know, I, I um, again, God's a mercy. 
when the um, Lord had delivered me some from some things supernaturally that were holding me back. And, and I, I felt his hand on me. He was dealing with me on a couple of things. And I felt his hand on me, and it was quite heavy. And, and I, I knew it was the Lord. You know, there's a difference between condemnation and conviction, right? If it's condemnation, that's not God. But, you know, God does convict. And I could feel the conviction on him. And, you know, he let me know that, that his hand was heavy on him because it was for my own good. That, that things that he was trying to take off me were holding me back. They were detrimental not only to my walk, but they were detrimental physically to me. And, you know, I started to see that different. I saw, started to see God at that moment as different. That's a loving father, right, when he does something like that. You know, as, as a father, you know, you love to give your kid a little treat here and there, but if he's on a diet of candy, you know, you're not going to let him have it because you know it's not good for him, right? It's going to rot his teeth out. It's not going to give him diabetes, all this stuff. That's, that's our God. You know, he sees things that we don't see. A lot of times we don't understand it. But any time he deals with something and, and tries to convict us on something, it's for our own good. Amen. There's an eternal, there's an eternal reward for that, and let me tell you. So anyway, um, let's go to the next slide here of slide seven. And let's look at a couple of things here that would hinder our growth. Uh, Verse, uh, yeah, First John 2.16, it says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of light, life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Right? Another scripture says, We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Right? Amen. Right. Mark 4.16 says, And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, entering in choke out the word, and it becomes unfruitful. So what he's telling us, the word of God can be choked out when we don't entertain or stop entertaining the things of God. Do you remember the parable of the seed, right? The one that fell on good ground produced a lot of good fruit. The one that was in the thorns and thistles, the cares and the riches of the world. They received it at first, but the cares and riches of the world choked that life out, right? Don't let that be said of us. You know, and we're, we're like Paul said, we're all, we're all on the same playing field that Paul even said, I, I find these two natures in me. You know, the one that wants to please God and the other one that wants to do what it wants to do. But he said, I feed the one that wants to serve God. Basically, I'm paraphrasing. And that has to be us, right? Whatever, whatever we want to be stronger, that's what we feed. We want to be stronger, we feed it with the Word of God. We feed it with a fellowship. We feed it with prayer, right? Amen. We must keep our eyes on the ultimate prize, the high calling of God. And Paul says, once we put our hands to that gospel plow, there's no looking back. You know, they in those days, they used to put a marker to keep a straight line. They used to put a mark at the end of the field to keep that plow straight, right? Keeping their eyes ahead. They didn't look back. If they looked back, they'd be all over that thing. They kept their, their, they kept their eye on that stake, right? That's what we're to do. We keep our eyes on the prize. Don't look to the left. Don't look on it. Don't look back. We keep our eyes on the prize, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, is it, and isn't life more, uh, isn't it easier with an eternal perspective, right? You know, we have to keep that at the forefront. You know, things we do here by faith, living for God, we'll be clipping coupons on that for eternity, right? And so it's, it's, I don't know how people without the Lord do it. I really don't, especially in the days we're living in. I don't know how you get up every day and face life. There's just no hope. But with Jesus, we have that hope because we're connected and we're plugged in. You know, an athlete, another thing about an athlete, he doesn't want to stay inactive for very long. Why? Because he'll lose the edge. A couple of days will make a huge difference. It may take a few more days to get back on track to where you left off. Fire pilots are the same way, man. They train every day intensely so they don't lose that edge. You know, even for myself, I can say that. And I'm just talking physically here or, or temporarily, but we can apply this spiritually. You know, I drive a, a big rig, right, of uh, 18-wheeler. 
And if I'm off for a couple of weeks, even getting back into it, it's like you, you lose a little bit, you lose a little bit, it takes me a little bit to get kind of get back into the groove. The longer you're off, I was off for a couple of years one time and I was actually nervous when I got back into it after being off a couple, a couple of years. And so it's the same way with, with, you know, why lose that ground, right? Just stay with them every day. You won't have to gain up that ground. Amen? Amen. You know, I, I, anybody that knows this, I know Pastor Al knows this. He, he went through something similar, but he, he had a shoulder operation. And uh, uh, all his muscles and ligaments and stuff were, were stretched and pulled and repaired. And, and uh, it's, it's very painful. But after a while, he gets to go to therapy and... They start stretching it out, putting it back into place. Still very painful. But they know if that doesn't happen, atrophy sits in, right? If that muscle stays inactive for too long of a time, atrophy sets in. Well, spiritually, it's the same way. You don't want to let atrophy set in on our spiritual life, right? You want to keep active. You want to keep moving. You don't want to be stopping. It's like stagnant water, right? Same thing. Stagnant water. You don't get any fresh water moving in there. After a while, it starts to stink. It causes disease and all kinds of bacteria. Nature can teach us a lot spiritually. But it's our choice. We're all on the same playing field, so to speak. You know, the Word of God shares with us some of the weaknesses of some of the men that he used so powerfully. He, he said that they shared the same weakness and passions and limitations medically and uh, mentally and physically and some of the faults that we do right we're all on the same playing field elijah comes to mind he said elijah was a man just like us with the same passion weakness doubts and fears and shortcomings who had to dependly who, who had to totally depend on god for his finances for his food and for his protection you know you you know you, you think about it he even used a raven to feed him uh, a bird of prey, right? I don't see ravens ever sharing their stuff with, with too many people, you know. But God even used a raven to feed his prophet. Wow. Do you think God can take care of us? I think he can, yeah. You know, and, and look at the history of, of the disciples. Rough, tough fishermen, crooked tax collectors. Paul, a, re a religious jealot, jet, uh, zealot who killed his own, right? He was a murderer. God still used them. And, you know, the enemy will always be hounding you and telling you you aren't good enough or you've messed up too much for him to use you. He'll always try and attempt to plant those, those thoughts in your head. Get them out of there, right? That's one of his favorite tricks. We're not perfect. No, that's no excuse for willful sin, but we serve a perfect God, don't we? It says, though a righteous man falls seven times, let him be found getting up, right? That's the key. Just get back up. That's why I love David so much. He said, David is a man after my own heart. David messed up time and time again, and he paid for some of those things dearly, but he said, he's a man after my own heart because he truly came back and repented and got up and took where he, or went where he, where he got off. <clears throat> Philippians 1.6 says, this is a wonderful promise of God, being confident of this very thing, that he which has a begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He's in our corner, right? What a promise. He's in our corner. If God be for us, who can be against us? Right. Meaning the work of grace of God working in us, the sanctification, the work of regeneration. He doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. It's him. It's all him as we submit to him. As a branch, we stay connected to him. There's a, there's a story of a, a guy. Uh, I'll share this, and then it's getting late. So, uh, there's a story of a guy. I, I watched this um, uh, Christ in Prophecy. Have you ever, you know who this guy is? David, uh, Dr. David Reagan. Uh, Lamb and Lion Ministries is actually what it's called, but it shows called Christ in Prophecy. He used to have. He f used to feature a singer on there, Jack Hollingsworth, and the the guy's story is just awesome. The guy uh, was had a terrible childhood, beaten by his stepfather. 
uh, messed up most of his life. He was an alcoholic, tried to commit suicide a number of times. But one day, like in his, he was like in his 40s, he heard the gospel and gave his heart to the Lord and turned his whole life around. He actually was a, had a wonderful voice, beautiful singer, and uh, that's how he ministered through his testimony and through song. But, but here's a guy that, that didn't think that anybody could use, right? Uh, and God picked him up out of the miry clay, set his feet up on solid ground, and used him to be a powerful man of God. A man, if God can do that for them, what what could he do for us? Mm. You know, the, and that's what I'm saying. You know, that's the trick of the enemy. He's always trying to tell us, you're not good enough. You're this, you're that. You know, when he reminds you of your past, you just remind him of his future, right? Uh-huh. Right. Amen. 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 So we need to search out the scriptures. We need to stay under good teaching and stay connected to the body of Christ to stay strong. Can't stay, say enough about that, about staying connected to the church's body. It's God's design to become stronger and stronger as the cords are interwoven together. Ecclesiastes 4.12 said a three-fold cord is not quickly broken and a strong rope has many strands. When we come together as a church body, you know, can't be broken, right? There's power. There's strength there. And so I'm going to um, just close with this last verse. Let's go to slide nine, brother. Hebrews 12, 12 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is now set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Our example of trust in God and of his commitment to his will for us. It's all paid, right? It's all paid. He paid it all. All to him I owe. You know, in um, when I was in Israel, I realized how much, not just the cross, which was the epitome of it, but, you know, the ministry, his three years, how he ministered walking through the dusty, hard, desert sun, hungry, cold, all to minister to the, his word, right? To minister. That was all for us. Amen. If you look at his life, came down from heaven, took on flesh, that we could be saved. All of that was for us. And, you know, we take it sometimes so lightly. So everything we need, everything he's done for us, if we stay connected, that's his commitment. Look what he's committed to us, right? Look what he's committed for us. We owe everything to him, don't we? We owe it all. Um, you know, the, pa- the pastor, Pastor Jim, has been teaching uh, some great stuff here last couple weeks on the last days. And, um, you know, it's, it's obvious to see, I believe, we're living in those last days. And the last days, what's one of the things that's telling us? Let us not forsake the assembling of together as the manner of such is, especially as you see the day approaching. Amen. And uh, so this, this is kind of how I'm going to end it, is that that's a very, very important part of mixing things with faith as we started that out. That's a part of it. Being in the Word, being prayed up, being part of that fellowship in this assembly as we see that day approaching. That's all a part of mixing it with faith. Amen? Amen. And and that's where we want to be, right? We want to be in His will. Because uh, I believe there's, uh, you know, we're living on borrowed time here, uh, uh, what I feel. And so uh, we need not to look to the left, not to look to the right. Keep that gospel plow straight and narrow right. Don't look back uh, because we're about ready to meet Jesus, I believe. Amen. Amen. So I I hope that's ministered to you today, that uh, this will spurn you on to uh, get into God's word, right? Stay connected to him. Stay connected to us. Stay connected to the church. We need each other in these last days. 
And we certainly need God to talk to us in these last days. We need everything he's got. We need to receive everything that he's going to give us. Amen? Amen. So, yeah. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to uh, just say a prayer, and then I'm going to ask Pastor Jim to come up close for me. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that uh, I just thank you for this opportunity to speak for you. I believe that this is what you've laid in my heart for this time. And, Lord, I ask you to... Uh, in myself and anyone else that would agree with me, stir that hunger in my heart for more of you, Lord. I, I need you, Lord. I need you every hour, every day, Lord. And so I, I ask you to stir my heart, Father, for more of you because you have the answer to everything. And uh, I just ask a blessing on this people as they leave today. Uh, be with them. Cover them by your precious blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor? Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use Darren's mic. So oh, yeah. Check, check. Am I on? All right. So, hi. Hi, Can you... Cut that, shut off the uh, live broadcast now. I don't need to be on. Uh, so I wanted to share a couple things with you.